Hey guys, so today I am going to talk about Zendikar Rising pre-release and why it is now going to be at a home pre-release just like Core 2021 was supposedly. Now did every store follow this? No. Will every store follow the Zendikar Rising pre-release that takes place September 18th? No. So let's read this. On the second Wednesday of every month, we will publish an update on whether we're con we've decided to continue the suspension or lift it for the following month. So if in September they decide to lift it, then on October would be the first date. October 1st would be the first day that the game stores could have their events, their live events again. We will publish the update on this website even if we choose to take no action, keep an eye on the weekly WPN update email for this announcement. We hope this will help you navigate your disruption and inform your mitigation plan with the best available information. The first update will come Wednesday, September 9th. Zendikar Rising pre-release takes place September 18th. So if Wednesday, September 9th, they decide to lift the, the what what do they call this? Re, suspension. If they are lifting the in-store play suspension on September 9th, it will still be too late to save the Zendikar Rising pre-release because that's on the 18th. So stores will miss at least two pre-releases. Um, and this is pretty big deal. Um, the pre-release is a huge way for a store to accumulate. So there's something in marketing called cost of accusation of a client. So how much money does it cost for me to acquire a client or a customer? Well, in pre-release terms, this is a free way for the stores to acquire customers. Some of these customers may be long-term customers. That's why in a pre-release, there's a lot more people and some of these people you've never seen before than a Friday Night Magic or a Commander Night or a modern, uh, modern Time because A, these people are maybe more casual. Maybe they don't have a standard deck to take to FNM standard. Or maybe they don't like drafting. But they're more casual. So in pre-release, you should have the most players that you will ever have in your store for Magic the Gathering given how it's a casual event and you don't need to have a pre-made deck to enter. After all, in-store play was reinstated on June 1st, and by the end of the month, the situation was drastically different, so different that we felt it best to suspend in-store play again. We are monitoring the situation and will make monthly updates. More on below. Until then, we support remote play, so we're back to the uh, remote FNMs. Over the course of the pandemic, so many of our lives has migrated, migrated to the web, if magic communities can do the same, there are many wonderful, meaningful experiences. And this is what I talk about. It's kind of like you took semi-toxic magic players that are naturally toxic and you put them online. What do you think is going to happen? So like Wedge, for instance, would never say in person in America that he doesn't enjoy America and he America discusses Wedge. He wouldn't say this to uh, another player, right? But online, he would all the time. Uh, we also want you to know that we are currently working towards additional tools and resources, aka MTG Arena, to refine the remote play experience. We can't wait to show you. Stay tuned for more. What does this mean for your local game store? Uh, missing one pre-release is pretty devastating, even though it is a core pre-release. And honestly, core is not the most powerful set nor is it the most popular set, and it is a summer pre-release, so... A lot of reasons that Core 2021 still hurts, right? Those are still really great customers, and it sucks that they're not going to do it anymore, but at the same time, it's understandable, and it's not like a giant loss, okay? Core 2021 is bad, but it's not like a very popular set, it wasn't going to have that many people anyway. Summer sets, especially core sets. The reason they got rid of core set, if you remember core or, or what is it? MTG Origins was supposed to be the last core set ever. 
because it doesn't sell well. So a game store is like, oh, whatever, of course, we lost Corset, it's fine. As long as we do not lose Zendikar. Zendikar, if there are fetch lands in it, you just missed a huge opportunity to bring returning players. Maybe they quit, and now they want to play again. I mean, Zendikar Rising, should they do it correctly, could be as big for the game as Return to Ravnica. Zendikar is a very popular set. You throw in, I don't know, the ally. I don't know if you can do ally. You put throw in the enemy fetch lands of original Zendikar. And bam, just like that, you can have a pre-release of 200 people. But given the current situation, we know that pre-release is at home now. So all those potential customers that would be at your store buying things while they take breaks from playing and are being, hey, this is a great store. Oh, I didn't know you had this comic. I didn't know you had this anime statue. I didn't know you had this board game. They got, you're effed. It's not just as simple. So ma there's only a few magic events that really draw people out. And pre-release is definitely the number one where, hey, everyone and their grandmother is coming out for pre-release. And some people who have quit magic, some people who, you know, have heard about the fetch lands are back. You have a lot of returning players who haven't played Magic for a long time coming back to these events. These are lifelong customers that you can make more and more money on. And these events are just not happening. So losing Zedankar pre-release is going to destroy a large majority of these stores. You can, you can eat losing Core 2021 because Core is not popular anyway. And a summer set is not popular. You cannot eat what Zendikar, because it's down the road. You don't have this pre-release where you're expecting 100, 200 people, maybe 100 of them being, 50% of them being new people. And maybe, let's say, 20% of those people come back to buy some more Magic cards, or they realize, oh, hey, there's a Pokemon Plus my significant other would like or my kids would love, and, oh, here's some, you know, anime things that they would enjoy. So it's not as simple from a marketing perspective. It's really difficult and very expensive to acquire customers. To get a customer in your door is very expensive. And pre-releases was a really fantastic way to do it for no money. Because naturally these people around you will, you know, and these are ideal customers. These are people who live around the area so they can easily, you are their local game store. And it's kind of a, a huge, you know, powwow community event to really help people and obviously help the game store. So, I mean, when you talk about this and you look at it this way, it is Zendikar not being able, Zendikar having to be pre-released at home is a massive hit on these game stores. I do not think they can survive. I do not think they can survive something like this. Core 2021, like I mentioned, yeah, I mean, it's a loss. It's definitely a loss. And I mean, many stores would rather have Core 2021, all things being the same, than not. But okay, whatever. It's not like important, right? It was so unimportant that they actually got rid of it one time. We actually didn't have a core set for a few summers. I think it happened for like two summers. But now, what is the massive loss? What is the loss that's going to really shake you? Zendikar, Fetchlands, and that's it. That's all you need to know. A store can survive not having a core 2021 pre-release because long-term, eh, whatever, maybe 50 people showed up anyway, would show up anyway, and maybe out of that 50 people, 10 people were new. Okay, we lost 10 new clients, right? And then we lost the revenue we had on that night, but it's the lifetime revenue, the li customer lifetime revenue our lifetime value that is most important to these stores. If a store in Zendikar can bring 100 new customers, or let's just say 50 new customers, and let's say half of those new customers are impressed by the store and they come back, that's the definition of a community. A returning customer is a lot easier to deal with than a new customer. So the amount of money it costs to make a returning customer buy again to advertise is probably... 10% of what it costs to acquire a new customer. Many, like Blue Apron, um, a lot of these movie pass, they lose money acquiring new customers. 
they lose money every time they acquire a new customer, especially the first interaction. But you're hoping that the lifetime, you're hoping this customer buys something next month, buy something next year, you know, spends their Christmas money with you. That's what the pre that's why the pre-release is so important. It's not for the money you make that night, it's for all future mornings. So let's say a customer hears about Zendikar, they played Zendikar when they were younger, and now they have money and they're, they're interested, they want to go. They go to pre-release, they have a good experience, they meet some new people, they're like, hey, you know, I'm getting into the geek, geeky gaming again. They will go back to that store because it's probably the closest store to them. That's how people go to pre-release. And they will buy maybe a comic book statue, maybe they buy some comics for their friends, they buy some Christmas gifts. That amount, that's why it's important. The importance is not how much money you made that night. The importance is how many new people and how many of those new people will come back to your store. Or even your old returning customers, they might have a good experience and be like, hey, you know, uh, you know, it's been a month since I've been to the store. Let me spend out my money. Let me stim- spend my stimulus money. Let me spend X, Y, Z. And for them to take away pre-release, I mean... You can survive core 2021 not being legit, but you cannot survive something like Zendikar. So whatever stores that hold these pre-releases against Wizards of the Coast, they're going to dominate. They will dominate for the next few years. Bye, guys.